Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Die, the His versus Hers versus His Guide to the Apocalypse, the podcast. My name's Brett. Joining me today, our first ever guest from the Killer's Crawl Space podcast, it's Bruce. Bruce, say hi. Hello. Hey Bruce. Uh, also joining us here in a little bit, my weirdo sister Jasmine will be back. With a with a possibility of a Taylor sighting, she's not feeling well. She's back in her home habitat, resting and recovering. Hopefully she'll be back for this episode. If not, we'll see her very, very soon. I know everybody loves Taylor, and she's the most important part of this podcast, and y'all could give a crap about me. But anyway, Bruce, what's new with you? Yeah, same old, same old. Mm. Are you drinking anything right now? Because I am. Nah, I'm not much of a... I don't really drink. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm drinking Terrapin Beer Company's Hopsecutioner, sitting for the topic today. And today's topic is, in fact, serial killers. So, yeah. Something that you're intimately familiar with. Something you've studied a lot about. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Can you uh, tell us about what goes into um, researching that sort of thing? Like, like, where do you start when you, when a when a case uh, kind of catches your eye? Uh, crap. Mostly, I just uh, whether it be I'm a big reader, so um, usually if there's books and stuff, I'll try to grab the books, the documentaries, or other you know podcast episodes mm-hmm. and stuff on them. But usually, a lot of it's digging through, and if it's like a local thing, then I'll try to go to that site. And if the killer's alive, I'll try to write them, see if I can get, you know, talk to them and get information from them, stuff like that. So, just depends on how, what route I can go with it. Okay, that's cool. I imagine you, like, like deep in a uh, uh, researching fever in, like, an ancient library in the basement somewhere, studying Eldridge's texts. Actually, like, my favorite thing, I actually, which goes with the paranormal aspect when I do all that. Like, I love research that, like uh, an episode I recorded last night for my podcast, um, it actually kind of goes off with an, the last episode I just released, and then there's more episodes that's going to probably branch off, but I like when things connect. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you find something out, and then you're reading something else, like, well, crap. Because, like, um, I went to... Uh, Moundsville Penitentiary a couple times, uh-huh. and I was doing a project on Hamlin, my home, my hometown, about paranormal things. Well, it turned out a guy that was in Moundsville Penitentiary, he actually almost killed uh, a boy or two in Hamlin, West Virginia. He was uh, a child molester, basically, and he ended up getting killed in prison. But turned out, you know, he was actually from the Hamlin area. So it was a connection, so it kind of went with the project I was doing. Is that that Andy Puglisi guy? Yeah, uh, no, not for the one. But that's from um, was it Massachusetts, if I remember correctly. Ah. Yeah, but that boy's been missing seventy six. But the ep- I have two episodes. This the episode I just recorded. It's basically two episodes. Well, it'll be the third episode from now. So I got two more. It's going to go in place of it. But this guy ties in to uh, the Andy, possibly. I found him researching Andy's case. Ah, I see, I see. Hey, guys, welcome back. My weirdo sister, Jarman, Jarman Gargar. Jarman, say hi. What up, party people? Woo-woo! I'm back. Jasmine, we've started the podcast. Can you, can you care to explain your mysterious absence? It's... Unbelievable, unforgivable, and unprecedented. Well, you know, I gotta make a living somehow, so. Selling your body for dope, you animal. What? What? Weirdo. Never mind. Bruce, is it true that, you know, um, a common thread with people, deranged individuals that end up serial killers or killers in general, um... A lot of that stems from their mothers, like their upbringing in that regard. Um, I don't know. Like, there's, I don't know. It just depends. It's, it's hard. It goes back to you know the nature and nurture thing. Mm-hmm. Like um, my, I, I guess I could say my favorite, but my the one I find most interesting is Ed Gein. Oh, um, sure, for sure. 
you know, where he inspired Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Buffalo Bill, Norman Bates and all that. Like, his mother was strict and religious to him, and, yeah, he kind of, which they don't really, some say he's not a serial killer because he was actually only convicted of one murder, even though they did find uh, the other lady's head in a bag in I his believe house. he killed two people and dug up a bunch of bodies, is what they say. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he only got, like I said, convicted of the uh, Bernice Warden. Yeah, they but got he him. killed uh, Mar- Mary Hogan, the bar, the bartender, as well. And they think he killed his brother. There's no evidence, but uh, they think he well, killed his brother. There's a, uh, you know, maybe they got him. He's certainly in that territory of crazies that become serial killers, and I guess they just got him early on before he could really kind of go even more bananas with that. But speaking of Ed Gein. Um, those that don't know, he's probably one of the most well-known killers, if not serial killer, than killers, um, there ever was. Like you said, he inspired things like Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Silence of the Lambs. He made furniture out of body parts, and he, uh, was the inspiration for Buffalo Bill, like, with the skin suit that he was trying to make, like, and yep. turning his house into, like, this macabre sort of, like, shrine to his mother, like, really crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so, yeah, he's a guy. Jasmine, what do you think about that? Anything at all? I don't really know who you're talking about. So. Ed Gein, G-E-I-N. Look he's, it up uh, kind of like a little old guy, basically. He died in, uh, 1984, but, um, they said, um, I talked to, uh, you know who John Douglas is? The I do old uh, FBI profiler. Uh, it rings a bell, and I'm sure I've heard you talk about uh, it on your podcast. Mindhunter is kind of based off him, the TV show. Mm-hmm. I talked to him a few years ago, and he said Ed Gein actually could have been released from the mental hospital, but his name and you know what he'd done is why he couldn't be released. Because I guess he don't remember nothing that he'd done when he got older. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they they're like yeah he could have could have got released, but his name people would not have liked that, you know, if he of got course. released from a state hospital. Of course. Well, speaking of which, one thing I do appreciate about your podcast specifically, which isn't strictly serial killers, um, it is true crime, but it's not just about serial killers, uh, but no. something I really appreciate about your podcast is you bring up unsolved murders as well that can't be necessarily be attributed to any one killer, but you kind of bring to light some of these older cases. Um and just, just talking about it and putting it out there, especially for the ones that are like older and unsolved, I mean, it's something I think needs to be done. There's too many cold cases that, even though they're, it's highly unlikely and it be solved, like those people deserve to be remembered in, in some way. So Yeah, there's um, one, people have asked me if I would ever do it because I've done a lot of research on it. But due to the family, you know, out of respect for them, that's the reason I haven't because they said they didn't want one done. But it's a local case in West Virginia. So, yeah. like, I've done a blog and stuff on it, um, let's see, three years ago. Mm-hmm. And I, I still have no clue. Like, I'm still, like, every day, you know, I'm usually thinking about it, or wow. here and there, if something pops up, I'll try to get something going. But um, it's pretty interesting, though, but... Well, you probably remember the whole uh, Samantha Burns from Huntington. Uh, yes, that name definitely rings a bell. I don't know all. Yeah, hand, 2002, but... she uh, disappeared, and they've never found her body since. Um, they well, Chad Fox and Brandon Basham went to uh, South Carolina, killed an older lady. Well, Chad got um, seven years later. Like he told him where um, Alice and Donovan the lady from South Carolina, like he said where her body was at, but they never would find her. Well, a missing persons group went to listen to him, and they actually found her where he said she was at. Well, he's done the same for Samantha, but nothing's ever been located. Well, back in, uh, see, 2014 or 15, 2014, like I started writing him to see if I could, you know, possibly help locate her. But it's like impossible because... He told me an area, and I've went out there and everything, but there's been, like, field dirt, field in there at the flood zone, even though he said uh, water wouldn't, you know, bother or anything. And they've had dogs out there. 
Um, then the other gases, they dumped her in the Ohio River, and that you know that river's been flooded a lot of times in 16 years. Jeez. So it's it's kind of looking like she'll never be found. But yeah, I've actually talked to uh, one of the ladies that had them here, like that housed them after they broke out of jail. Um, you know, because Chad kind of blamed her for all of it. Saying, you know, she's the one picked out the spot. She done this. She done this. Well, her story is something different. Like, I even tracked down her, uh, see, one of her ex-boyfriends, and he even accused her of things. And it's just a big spiral that I have no clue if it's ever going to end. It, yeah, and in, in the longer the time, uh, you know, goes on, the longer that it goes unsolved, the more likely it's, it is to be unsolved, it seems like, as well. Which is uh, which is awful to think about. Um, Jasmine, are yep. you a serial killer? Are you a killer? Uh, no. I mean, I'm sure. I might be in the future. We'll see. Our mom was pretty crazy. No, I had a question uh, for you, uh, Bruce. Yep. Did anyone ever use like a psychic or anything when it came <coughs> to searching for her death? Do you think that psychics? actually are like helpful during investigations like what's your mindset on 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 those types of situations i know there was a few because um well if you guys remember see last year or so when um crap what was his name jimmy hasil he actually blew up and said you know samantha burns buried in his girlfriend's yard and all that in ohio and, like, every, like, that's when Samantha was, like, the positive thing out of that was, you know, brought attention back to her case. Like, I had, crap, like, I had people from, like, California contacting me about it. Like, I had a bunch of views on my page and everything. Like, I had, like, probably over 100 messages from people. Well, I met some other people through that process, and they knew some psychics. And I knew... There was another website early on in this when it first all happened. And, uh, like, she said some interesting things, but, like, to fast forward back to uh, the one, let's see, there was two or three psychics that they talked to, and I was in, I happened to be in the group chat. And one of them I kind of didn't believe because she was kind of going off of whatever. We know how sometimes, you know, they say psychics will do that where they just kind of use the whole, uh, Whatever you give them, they feed off that. And then if you correct them, they're like, oh, yeah, that's what I meant type thing. That's kind of what one of them was doing. Like, she wasn't really giving anything new or anything. It was just her feeding off what everybody was telling her. So I was like, eh. Like, I'm kind of 50-50 on that. Like, I think some of them are legit, but you have so many fakes that make the legit ones kind of just back away and not, you know, step into it. So, like, I'm yeah, 50-50 on it. Yeah, I personally I'm of the mind. Uh, I don't really buy. I don't buy psychics, and I'm not really. I don't. I'm not really a believer in the paranormal. I haven't personally experienced it, so until I do, I kind of just err on the side of nia, yet. Well, let's see what we got next, guys. We talked about Ed Gain a little bit. We could talk about a couple other peoples. If you so care. Uh, we were talking about uh, mothers earlier. Sure, like my mom. There's a rumor. There's a rumor with uh, Ted Bundy. Um, I re- wouldn't really say that his mom led him to you know do what he done, mm-hmm. but um, from my understanding, she got pregnant, like kind of ran off or something, and came back. But there was one rumor floating around that his grandpa was his father as well. But he was raised up to believe his mom, when she was younger, was his sister, and that his grandparents were his parents. I do remember reading that. Yeah, like there's yeah. definitely um, an underlying uh, connection between all these these killers that seems to be the upbringing, like some kind of craziness with the family that instills a uh, a kernel of nuttiness. That tends to explode later in life, for sure. Yeah, it's it's weird because like you'll think that you know there'll be a few serial killers 
that will do like one thing and you're like, well, these kind of all connect. But then you have another serial killer that's like completely different, like um, Dennis Rader, the BTK killer. You know, he stopped killing. You know, he eventually got, you know, he was active for 31 years. And then he got his fill. But, well, yeah, his last murder was either 92 or 95. But, um, like, he just basically, you know, he had kids. But he started writing the police again, and then he ended up getting arrested and stuff. And he was he was married. Wife never knew nothing about it. And the crazy thing about him, too, is he would somehow do, like, bondage photos of him and, like, the way that he would kill some of the victims. Like, one of them he's hanging up in the air. One of them he's half buried, tied in a chair. But he would take all these pictures by himself. Hmm. Uh, probably like he, reliving the um, murders that he yeah, committed. Yeah, if you look at, like, one of the pictures, it's him sitting in a chair, and he's got a mask on and a wig and, like, women's clothes, and he's looking straight at the camera like it is the creepiest thing ever. It sounds but like he's he, trying to relive the thrill of the acts he committed. Yeah, and like I said, he um, the reason they caught him is because they, he asked the police if they could trace the floppy disk. You know, it was 2004, of course they could. And they traced it back to the church in his name, and turned out he was like one of the big guys in the church. And uh, he's, I've wrote, I've actually got a few letters from him, but I read a book that he helped work on with uh, a, a doctor um, person, and it's really good. Like, he talks about, like, the process of what he went through. Like he was talking about when he was writing the cops and mailing them, like just picturing the stamps and stuff. He'd pick out the post office and, you know, just all off the wall thing. It was really interesting though. That's, that's all. It, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, some other dudes, like we've, we've definitely gleaned over a lot of the, uh, or at least a few of the most well-known ones. And even some of the ones that, that maybe aren't so well known that deserve mentioning. Um, everybody knows the John Wayne Gacy's, the Jeffrey Dahmer's, the Ted Bundy's, the Jack the Ripper's, those guys. I want to talk about a guy that I thought was a, a little kind of almost unique among, it almost sounds straight out of like a movie or a TV show, and that's H.H. H. Holmes. Jasmine, do you know who he is? I've heard of H.H. H. Holmes, He's but... not a fancy children's book author from, from London, I'll tell you that much. He was the, uh... I'm pretty sure he is. Is he really? No, he's not. No. <laughs> don't, don't throw me for a loop like that. <laughs> Just because you know more about this stuff than I do. You you, you could have got me to believe that. Like, really? Was he? Uh, he he done quite a bit of stuff anyway, so it wouldn't yes, surprise me. If that he, was a uh, way to make money. He had what was called the murder castle. He had he ran basically like uh, he owned a building and he ran it like a hotel or, or or a bed and breakfast, if you will. And he would you know book people up to stay, uh, especially around the time of the, this is in Chicago, so it was during the Chicago World's Fairs. And he would people would go missing, and back then it was real real easy. To get away with that stuff, you know? Um, yep. And he would put them in the walls and stuff, and it's just like a true, true house of horrors. Like, really just... It's up there with Ed Gein's craziness, it seems like. Except this guy seems much smarter than... than more intelligent than Ed was. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a whole lot smarter. Yeah, like... And that's a really crazy one. Another one... That I think nobody talks about, at least in the various, sh you know, usually when you see a show or something related to this, it's definitely almost home, around the home base, the United States, the Americas. We don't hear a whole lot of the guys worldwide, right? So uh, Yeah, not too much. So one specific guy that I wanted to, wanted to bring up is, is by the name of Pedro Lopez. Bruce, are you familiar? Uh, yes, but I'd have to refresh my memory on though. He's the, uh, killed a bunch of kids, didn't he? If yes. I remember correctly. He killed yeah. a lot of kids. Possible victims number. Keep in mind, you know, these aren't convictions or proven, but his possible victims number 300 plus. And the proven, thinking, vic yeah. the proven victims, however, is also staggeringly high at 110. 110 victims, which dwarfs the amount of, like, the 
I don't even know what the highest killer from America is. It's probably like, I, probably that, uh, what was it? Dr. Death killed like 200 some people. Uh, yeah, and I know they say like H.H. H. Holmes, they supposedly said his number could go up to 200 plus, but yeah. that's still, you know, give me because they don't know how many people actually went disappeared. Back sure, then. but confirmed kills anyway, 110, maximum 300 plus. And, and we're not talking like adults or medical patients. We're talking child murders, child rapes. Like his nickname was the Monster of the Andes. He targeted young girls between the ages of 8 and 12. Truly a disgusting individual, and probably the most terrifying part of it all is, is you know, he was incarcerated. He was convicted and incarcerated, but he was released in 1998. Like, he served, uh-huh. you know, what, just over 10 years in prison, and he was released, and his current whereabouts are unknown, which is a horrifying thought. And especially... In, in like Colombia and that region, Peru, Ecuador, all those areas, like I can imagine probably the smorgasbord of victims that he could have access to, you know, what, with oh, all yeah. that. I really uh, like going back to Dennis Rader, like where he stopped though, like he still said that he followed people around. And I honestly don't think, like, my personal opinion, like with uh, him, you know, I don't see him just quitting you know like if he got released out of prison i don't see him just oh i'm not going to do it again he's going to do it and probably better and i'll get caught with it well for sure i would say that once once you've crossed that threshold there's no going back and you're always going to want that thrill or to relive that that's the adrenaline rush they get yes so for sure uh looking at it here i got the list in front of me uh in america the highest kill count i guess Confirmed, anyway, is a guy named Gary Ridgway at Yeah, the uh, Green River Killer. The what's that? The, he's the Green River Killer. Ah. Let's see, he's a truck painter who confessed to killing 71 women, also known as the Green River Killer. He targeted sex workers from Seattle. And suspected of killing over 90, confessed to 71 and convicted of 49. Sentenced to life Yeah, you know murder. something weird with him? What's that? Um, after he killed women and stuff, like say that he didn't want to go out and stuff, he would go back to the bodies and, yeah, have have his way with the uh, dead bodies. Oh, necrophilia. Lovely stuff. Yeah, because with uh, Ted Bundy, because Ted Bundy tried to help them catch the Green River Killer, well, Gary Ridgway, and he said, when you find a body, don't move it. Leave it. He will come back to it. And turned out he was correct, because that's what Ted Bundy done. He went back to the, some of the bodies. Sure, that's some real Silence of the Lambs type Hannibal stuff right there. Advice. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce, what's your favorite like uh, movie in that vein, would you think? What turned you... Uh, better yet, better question. What turned you on to true crime in general? What made you passionate about talking about it? Uh, it'd actually be my mom. Really? My mom's been to... Yeah, she's in the true crime. Always had like she watched the movies, documentaries, read the books, and basically since I've the way she talked, the way I came when I came home from the hospital as a baby, like like I watched horror movies and like I had a Freddy poster on my wall at, like age five. Like I've always been into the darker things, I guess you could say. But she never like wrote any of them. Like I kind of took it the step you know farther by doing that and. You know, I, I researched a lot more than probably she did, and you know, then I do a podcast now on it, of course, stuff of course. like that. But yeah, she basically was the reason I'm interested in in all of it. Well, that's interesting stuff. That's stuff I didn't know about you, and I'm glad I asked. Do you got a favorite <sighs> movie or TV show you like to watch that in regards to this kind of stuff? Uh. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, there's a few of them, but I don't know if I actually personally have, like, a like a favorite one. What's uh, your opinion on Criminal Minds? I've yeah. actually never really watched a, a lot of those shows, actually. No! It, it's kind of <laughs> weird, like... I'm trying to think. Like, I like the Ed Gein movie, the... uh let's see, I'm trying to think. came out in 2001, but the guy that played as him was Steve Railsback because he played as Charles Manson. 
an old uh, Helter Skelter TV miniseries they done back in the seventies, and um, I think like there's a few like uh, documentaries and stuff I like, especially the ones that do like the investigating stuff and trying to locate various killers and all that. That's cool. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about with Bruce. Some survival tips if you are the fixation of a madman's obsession. Jasmine! Jasmine, what? stick around! Okay. 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 Tun Tun, you love belly rubs, don't you? Don't you, doggo? Anywho, I know something else you love, my little beautiful little ad dog. You love podcasts. And if you like podcasts too, dear listener, you're going to love the Killer's Crawl Space podcast. With our guest Bruce, who have you been listening to this whole time. So, look him up, check him out. Download his apps, give him a listen. He goes in depth on all his cases that he, you know, he he researches. It's a serious true crime podcast. You know, we have a lot of fun here on this podcast. But let me know, let you know that his podcast is the real deal, right? Tun tun, tun tun. That's a tail wag for yes. And a sneeze for double yes. And a double, double, double sneeze for a triple yes. So guys, please, listen to the Killer's Crawl Space Podcasts. Podcast. Guys, I'm a little drunk. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't check out his podcast. Please do it. Getting to know Bruce has been wonderful. He's a great guy. His podcast is sweet. Also, don't forget to check out his upcoming podcast, Kids Crawl Space. And, uh, yeah, follow him on Twitter, 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 at Killers Crawl Space 1. That's Killers Crawl Space, but instead of the space, it's an SP and a 1. Check out the description of this episode for the link to that. So, yeah, check out Killers Crawl Space podcast and the upcoming Kids Crawl Space podcast. He's a cool dude. Who deserves cool listeners, which is you, obviously, duh. And leave them a review, if you don't care. It's how we get ourselves out there. So, check them out. Thank you. Say bye, Tintun. Good girl. From all minds, like a billion tons, because that's all I can reference. Okay, bye, shut up. Okay, we're back. Jasmine, shut up for a second, so... Welcome back, everybody. I'm back with my weirdo sister, Jasmine, and the true crime podcaster, Bruce. Bruce, say hi. Hello. Jasmine, you're back. Am I allowed to speak now, or not? Yes, you're allowed to speak now. In fact, this is the perfect time to speak, because this is an audio format, and uh, audio listeners would prefer... prefer poor for... Poi foy! I can't Wow, talk. you can totally English today. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So real quick, guys, we're going to go into a thing here. Survival tips, like we said before the break. Um, so, if we're the target, what can you do? Um, Jasmine, what do you think? I wanna, I'm going to start with you. Um, I think it depends on if you're dealing with a psychopath or a sociopath, honestly. Like... How are they? Are are they holding me captive? Are okay. They kill me right Hang on. on the spot? 
they're the hold on. You're already dead because you're trying to diagnose this person while they're a, a no, you know attempting I'm just saying to get it depends you. on the situation what you would do. No, yeah. it's it's yeah. simple. Like for me, I, I am adapting safety protocols from my work, the buddy system. It's perfect. It's real hard to be abducted and murdered if you have a buddy to help you, right? Like you're a serial killer is or a killer in general is less likely to target you if you got somebody with you. Right? Am I wrong, Bruce? I'm going to go a little darker, and I don't think there is any survival tips. Oh. Because if you deal with a serial killer, you know, like Ted Bundy, everybody says that he's a good-looking guy and all that. You know, a lot of them, serial killers, they play their different cards, and they play to what they're after. Um, like with um, then, like the buddy system, Say, like, look at all the shooters. You got the school shootings and the mass shootings. You know, you're just going to get killed either way. It depends on the situation. So it's kind of, it's, which more now it's easier because, you know, a lot of people, you know, social media, you kind of see the threats more. Mm -hmm. But warning signs. That's something important to take into account. Yeah, warning signs are like, my brother, there's a, one of the podcasts I listened to, it was a case that a dude like worked at a like a supermarket place. My brother said he shopped in there a lot of times, but the young guy, like he was on night shift, like he locked all the doors and like killed and shot like I think three or four people. But turned out like he had like a bunch of YouTube videos and all that and like there was oh, warning signs. But if you ever that. notice, people don't catch the warning signs. So see something, say something, do something. If you see something that's off kilter then you need to say something about it and potentially do something about it if it's within the immediate vicinity. So fight or flee, I mean, always if there's an active shooter or something of that nature, obviously you want to find the nearest exit. You want to to alert authorities. If you can't escape, you want to try and hide. But if all that fails, then fight for your life, tooth and nail. Fist and foot, baby. Um, But yeah, I understand what you're saying. If it's a serial killer, someone who's... Who has once they have a target in mind, they're gonna get, they're gonna you know come hell or high water, they're gonna get that person. They've already hunt. They're basically hunting. A serial killer is someone that hunts other people. They've got your movements. Yeah, they, down. Uh, they've been watching you. They'll probably get you. Sometimes they'll like pick up people like you know, if the if the opportunity is good. Like say you're walking along the side of the road. You know they might pick you up because nobody's oh, there. Crime of opportunity. But a lot of them do kind of follow you. Crime of opportunity. Uh, if you're picked up and like a guy's got you at gunpoint or something, cra- uh, you know, crash the car if you can, or if you're carjacked. Alternatively, crash the freaking car. Just do it. I mean, it's better than than getting, you know, the alternative. That's Fight, true. man. Fight back. For sure. Stranger danger. All that. Don't hitchhike. People don't really do that anymore. I still see them occasionally, but I ain't picking them up. Sorry, bro. Yeah, don't pick up hitchhikes. There was actually a long time ago, I was, I was taking my uh, my girlfriend home, and there was a woman. This was like in the middle of the night. This was crap. Back in high, I think I was still in high school. But this woman was waving in the middle of the road, just waving her arms up in the air. I'm like, I'm definitely not stopping. Turned out she wasn't nothing bad, but... She was just warning me that a wreck was around the around the curve. Ah, still don't want to. But yeah, but you never know. That's oh a, yeah, that's a thing, and that's kind of sad that the way that it's that way now, because you know, it used to be you could trust a stranger potentially, but mm-hmm. you know, you just can't anymore. Um, yeah, well, you know, most of the time, the person who abducts you isn't a stranger. You probably have met them before. That, that does happen as well. And, that's, so. and sure. that's why you never see, like, they used to um, do the branding of, like, stranger danger or don't take candy from a stranger. Or it's 10 but o'clock. You really do you know where your children are? Yeah, you don't really see those as much because you're broadcasting that a stranger can be bad, and that's true, but your neighbor could also be the one to just abduct you a thousand times easier because you know him. Mm-hmm. 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 Sorry. Mm-hmm. No, it's okay. Listen, guys, do we got anything else before we end this thing here? Anybody got anything to say? Obviously, we'll plug the socials in a second, but 
in, in terms of the killers. Jasmine, got anything? I know you're you're keen on research and all that jazz. Anything that you wanted to say but haven't been able to get in edgewise yet? Oh boy. Uh, Investigation Discovery. Also, good channel. You're just plugging your shows. They are not sponsors of this show. <laughs> Therefore, good listener, rewind and pretend you didn't hear it. Um, I would just like to say that I tried to get my mom to be on this podcast after she guilt tripped me to be on this podcast because she also loves true crime. And uh, I was like, fine, you know, let's have you on there. It'll be a fu- it'll be funny. We'll pretend I'm a serial killer and you're the cause or something. It'll be hilarious. And then she's like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't have time to prepare. And I'm like, mom, you have plenty of time to prepare. So I know you're listening right now, mom. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna record you. It's gonna happen. So saith the Almighty Taylor, who isn't here right now. Uh, Bruce, you got any little? Little drops of knowledge you can drizzle on it. Uh, not really. Fantastic. Like my drops of knowledge is basically like you just gotta gotta watch your watch where you go and you know who you trust. trust you can, but be safe. For sure. Yeah. Um, guys, earlier in the episode you heard a commer- little commercial commercial for it, but uh, again. Bruce has a true crime, true crime, blah, 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 blah. Bruce, I can't talk. I'm sorry. I butchered that. He has a true crime podcast. It's called Killer's Cross Space. Check it out. And uh, you got another podcast coming up here pretty soon, don't you? Yes. I'm, um, hopefully, I might be recording the day or tomorrow with the kids. I'm debating on what they're wanting to do yet. Bruce, what's, uh, what's the running title for that, if you don't mind me asking? That, that'd be the title you came up with, was Kids, Kids Cross Space. Yeah, Kids Cross Space. You know, I had to had to brag a little bit. That's a real good name, if I do say so myself. That's, that's good branding oh, yeah. is what it is, Bruce. So check out his podcast, Killers Cross Space. Um, there's really a lot of good information in there. He does his homework. He talks about all these, these terrible things that happen and brings to light a lot of things that should stay in the light, honestly. Um... And keep, and keep an eyeball out for his new podcast, Kids Crawl Space. I don't know the content, but I know it's going to be with his kids, so that ought to be pretty neat. Can you give us a little, uh, you know, a little insight as to what, what it's going to be about? Like, are you, are, you, are you able to talk about it? Oh, yeah. Uh, the first episode, well, uh, when I said earlier, when I had, like, a, a Freddy poster when I was, like, five, yes. I'm basically my sons and uh, Jason, Freddy, Michael, Predator, Alien. All that. So our first episode is Jason Voorhees versus Predator, who's going to win in that battle. And we're going to do like, might do like reviews or just talk about various like uh, horror movies and stuff like that. He's, he's into all that. That's awesome, guys. Check it out, Bruce. You'll let me know when it comes out. I can tweet it out to the peoples, the few peoples that follow this podcast on uh, the Twitters. We are also on the Twitters at Let's Die Pod. We're at Gmail at, at uh, Let's Die Pod at gmail.com, and we're on Facebook at Let's Die the Podcast. Bruce, do you want to plug your uh, Twitter? I'm actually not sure what my Twitter, Twitter handle is. I bet you I can find it out. I know it's not like it's maybe I don't know. I think space ain't a full word on it. Like Hold on, I'll, like I'll get it. SBA this one. is um, this is true guerrilla podcasting at its best, guys. Bruce's uh, Twitter handle is at Killers Crawl One, so that's K I L L E R S C R A W L S P One, S P One. So okay, S P One. I will tweet it out as well. So for the tens and tens and tens of listeners of this show, check him out. He's an awesome guy. We love him very much. We love him, and we're in love with him. And he'll probably be mine and Jasmine's first victim. Sorry, Bruce. Anywho, what? that's it. Jasmine, any final words? Uh, I am not a serial killer. Mm, that's what a serial killer would say. Bruce, you got anything final? Finality. Finish him. Um, you might want to watch that old guy at work that you come in and see in the mornings. I tell you what, you might want to watch um, that guy that posts memes all the time on the Facebooks. 
do have a point there. Yeah. Jeff, what's up? Um, guys, I got nothing else. Hey, but, you know, if we're going to die, let's die together. Wah, wah, wah. Jasmine, say bye. All right, everybody. Bye. Bruce, say bye. 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 to investigate a location in an area I've been wanting to try to get to for 10 years. Are you going to podcast, you know, while you're going in and looking at everything? Uh, I haven't actually done anything paranormal-wise on it. Well, sometimes I will, like, if the true crime case goes into, like, like you know, has, like, paranormal reports, that's about it, too. Mm. Well, I think that's a good thing to bring up with Brett. Uh, we do a lot, well, he does a lot of, like, Paranormal and like, monsters, like a bunch of like all over the spectrum. I think that might be a good if you like wanted to go there. You guys could do it together. Are y'all conspiring behind my back? Uh, no. I'm trying to set up something for you guys to do together. <laughs> Some paranormal stuff. <laughs> Sounds like conspiring to me. First time what I was telling. Please. Yeah, basically stuff to get. Yeah, that place though, it's like a video and stuff. It's really interesting, and it, the history of the location is a Civil War battle. Scary so Creek. That kind of might tie it. Yeah, yeah, the uh, Putnam aging. I got you. It. Uh, yeah, that place might ha- be haunted. Bruce, you don't have to cover for her. I know Jasmine's been uh, conspiring to steal my show from underneath me for some time now. I was saying you guys could do a podcast while it's. Exploring the haunted area, I think that would be interesting. Oh, like a, oh, like on location? I don't know about yes. all that. It'd be cool. It'd be interesting the, the, to listen to. At least, the, at least the way I record, it's a pain in the ass. Half the time, like I said, the thing, it is so dependent on a Wi-Fi connection. It just wants to drop. And I recorded like a ton of like little mini interviews during Dragon Con, and like half of them didn't fucking save, so... It's real finicky. It's, yeah, it's scary. It's scary because you'll record a bunch of something and then, oh, it, it doesn't want to, you know, save it or whatever. So the, the main... I had a... Go ahead. But it, uh, I had an incident, uh, actually on a paranormal investigation at my mom's store. Like, um, I record, with my record, I just plug in headphones and listen live to the audio. And, well, there's a voice that came over that I don't think was anybody's and I was just letting everybody else listen to it. Well, Steve and me accidentally deleted the whole file by mistake. Oh no. So I, I, I ended up losing Like it sounded like a child or something, but I can't remember. That's terrifying. What I was, yeah. What I was talking about, but I can't remember if it went to what I was talking about or it actually answered a question, but it was like maybe a sentence roughly. And yeah, I accidentally, I went to delete something else and actually deleted that file, so lost all of it. That's wow. very depressing. Yeah, ch- uh, another note. Uh, ghosts. Ghost children. Stay are tuned. Terrifying. Stay ghosts. tuned for ghosts next month, October. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs>